Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartutsa Lab, talking to you in the pissing down rain because the bad guys don't care if you get wet and neither do I. So, in this session we're going to be looking at using an age-old piece of Wu-Tang Clan Winston, wisdom, which is protect your neck. So often when we get used to practicing classical pugilism or modern boxing, we get used to the notion that we can't attack behind the opponent because all of the sporting best practices, even training best practices, make that unkind, unethical, career-ending. But unkind, unethical career-ending is exactly what we want for self-defense. Now, I always laugh at the guys that think they've got the deadly techniques. There is no such thing as the deadly techniques. You know, if you can't hit someone with a jab when you're sparring, ain't no way you're going to get them with a finger jab. You need the attribute, skill, power and athleticism to be able to land a shot on target, no matter whether it's a punch, an eye poke, whatever you've got, a knife. You need that skill. Um, but punching behind a person is a really important skill to foster and techniques to learn. And I'll show you some of the things that we do in the Bartizzi lab from the source material and from new material that showcase how you can attack behind a person. So the first of these is called the kidney hammer. So you see these in early French boxing books, French savat books. You also see them as blows in Western pugilism books. And essentially they often come from a position of clinch. The opponents in the clinch are in chancery, you've got the back of their head, or you're at core, core, you know, you're, you're body to body. And what we're looking to do is drive the hard bit of the hand round the back into the kidneys. So I train this like so. One, attain the clinch. So typically you don't just end up in a clinch in abstract. So I practice hit, clinch. Then we practice the kidneys would be around the back. So we practice using the hammer fist in this horizontal circular motion. Coming down, learn where the kidneys are. They're higher than you think, really. Whip them round and be prepared to use this with some degree of shoulder whirl. So you should whirl your shoulder as you drop some weight into this blow. And you want to be doing this in a compound way. This is not a one and done. It's not like a 70s James Bond judo chop. Judo chop and he falls down. You might need to do this four, five, six, seven times. So you've got the head down. You've got a decent chancery, which is a video from at the time, and you practice whipping in this kidney hammer. <coughs> now again, it's likely to cause a lot of pain, but it's not going to cause huge amounts of damage. So once you've caused that pain, you've got that disruption, you want to be able to push off and do something deadly. So as a kind of compound series of techniques, I'm going to launch a big cross. Bang! Get my attachment. Fire in several kidney hammers. Post off. Go here. Again, good way to use attacks that go behind the human being. So the thing we're going to look at is rabbit punches. Now, when you catch a rabbit and you want to kill a rabbit, you grab by the legs, you smack it on the back of the neck, the rabbit dies. It's a dangerous technique. It's banned in boxing. It's banned in all combat sports, rightly so. But it's an important thing to train for self-defense in extremis, if you need it. For me, when I do the rabbit punch, I curl the big knuckle around the back. So my wrist ends up like that. That's the back of your head, where your neck meets your skull. And I hit this way. The reason I hit this way is it angles my forearm to also cause some damage. Because sometimes you mess up the timing. So if I do this, I angle the forearm, which means I can hit you with the knuckle and cause that damaging jerk-like blow, which hopefully incapacitates you. Or if I cock that up and I miss, I've still got a powerful sharp forearm, which is doing that same thing. So again, we grab the head and we do that rabbit blow. And again, these things don't happen by chance. So in the same scenario we did before, I might land big cross, bang, get into chancery, dig my head in, then launch that rabbit blow. And again, make sure if you're gonna do it, do it properly. Use your hips, use your shoulder. <coughs> then push off, and then hit. So. <coughs> Useful ways to use the rabbit blow. Really painful, really effective. Then we've got spine hooks. Spine hook works exactly like the rabbit blow, but it's aimed at the kidneys or the spine. And we do this to the body. So again, similar technique here, but we're going down low. So I won't repeat the technique, it's the exact same entry, but as opposed to doing the rabbit punch up high behind the neck, I'm doing it to the body, rinsing these in. You can also compound them. Body, body, rabbit punch. Body, body, rabbit punch. Really painful, really deadly, really final. Only use them in extremis. Okay, next thing, we're gonna look at the concussive slap. So 
often when we get into a grapple, when we get into a chancery, we can be in the habit of being too kind. If you've done Thai boxing, if you've done catch wrestling, we get into the habit of being sometimes too kind with how we grab the back of the head. We're working in self-defense. We want to make sure if I'm grabbing the back of your head, if I'm going to chancery, I'm going to really whack you around the back of the head. I want that feeling like you've just had whiplash. So again, when we're practicing moving into this grapple, get used to the notion of making that percussive, using the hard flat bit of the palm, in the base of the skull in a percussive way. So if I'm entering the clinch, I've done so in a way that makes him feel like he's just been hit by a car. That's what I want. I want that instant jerking motion so that I can expose him to throws, to trips. In jiu-jitsu, we'd call this kazushi. I've disrupted you, I've unbalanced you. I've clouted you around the back of the head with that chancery slap. So I've snuck this around the back of your head, clouted you here, and that disrupts you enough for me to hit you somewhere deadly, to throw you to do something more final. But again, it's not as damaging or as crushing as the rabbit blow, but it can be very, very effective. So as you enter the chancery, as you enter the one-handed clinch, make sure you're being percussive with that hand. It really bears good fruit, good dividends for you to be able to execute a throw, execute an escape, or do what you need to do to survive an encounter. So in terms of attacking around the back, that blow is really useful. And then finally, one from the Jiu-Jitsu or Temiwaza Canon, is the koppel ken. So the koppel ken is using the thumb knuckle and it works exactly like the rabbit punch and in this instance we're driving the thumb knuckle typically into the arteries or behind the ear. So same setup, long punch, I slap that chancer in and instead of doing a rabbit punch I use my koppel ken, my thumb knuckle and I drive it round. Typically I'll wrap it round and hit the opposite side of the neck like so. I've got long arms so I can do that. If you've only got short arms, sometimes you just have to do a front couple ken. But seeing as we're talking about attacks from the back, for me, it's that percussive chancery. Whip it round, use that thumb knuckle somewhere it hurts. So, to reiterate, sporting martial arts, which make up a lot of bartitsu, are great. But sometimes you need to learn the unsporting applications to make them street self-defence worthy. You need the attributes and the physicality of the sporting arts, combined with the know-how and the disruption of the dirty fouls. So, the kidney punch or the kidney hammer. Hammer fist, close to the body, whip it round, compound time, so multiple times, using your shoulder, using your hip, really rip that kidney hammer in. Then you've got your rabbit punches, curling the punches round, really, really important. You've got your spine hooks, which is the same as the kidney punch, uh, same as the rabbit blow, but round the back of the spine. Also really important, the concussive slap. So if you're getting into chancery, make sure you slap that blow in to get the concussive moment. And the koppel ken, using your thumbs to wrap those round and get into the vital point, into the kyusho, into the really painful bits of the human body, using your sharp bony knuckle. So, remember, watch your back, and if you need to, attack theirs.